<laughs> All right, this restaurant in Pilsen is serving up four courses from its wood-fired tasting menu. Yeah, joining us in Studio 41 Kitchen, preparing roasted lamb, mm -hmm. a twist on chimichurri, and green coconut curry. Mm. Dusek Tavern and Dining Room's executive chef, Jeff Thompson. Thanks, Jeff, for joining us. Thanks for having me. I mean, we've got a very multi-level dish that you're making here for us today. Sure, yeah. Let's talk about the lamb first because I have never heard of this part of lamb. Right. Yes, so the lamb saddle is oh. kind of like the New York strip of the lamb. Okay. Um, it's super tender. Um, it can definitely be substituted for lamb chop. That works perfectly. Okay. Um, so right here is the lamb saddle. Mm. I just did a little bit of butter basting and uh, infused a little bit of thyme and garlic. Okay. Um, so we're gonna let that rest for a minute. Um, so saddle, so y can you find that everywhere? Or? It's not super common. Okay. Um, we get it from Slagle Farms, oh. uh, but like I said, the lamb chop is a perfect substitution with this dish. Okay, it works okay. great. All right, Got so it. that's gonna rest for a little bit. Yeah. Okay, what do we do next? Um, so next I'm gonna fry something called panisse. So this is a chickpea cake. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it's traditionally a French street food. Oh. Um, kind of like reminiscent of a French fry. Oh. So we deep fry it and it gets crispy on the outside and nice and soft and creamy and on the inside. And you dip it mayo afterwards? Mayo. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely could. You definitely could. That'd be or delicious. Ranch. Sure. Or ranch. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So that'll fry at uh, 350 degrees for about two minutes. Okay, and okay. is that um, olive oil? What kind of oil do you use? Just uh, rice bran oil or vegetable oil or okay. anything. Yeah. Okay, got That'd it. That'd be perfect. Oh, man, that sounds fantastic. And you guys, this is the new menu for this season, right? Yes. So, yeah, so we have a couple menus at D6. We have our tavern menu, mm -hmm. which is kind of like American traditional um, laid back food. Um, and then we have our wood fire oven tasting menu, yeah. pre feed tasting menu. Um, it's kind of like a create your own tasting menu with uh, more seasonal and uh, local ingredients yeah. focused around the two wood fire ovens that we have. Very nice. So tell us about the restaurant. You're in Pilsen mm -hmm. and you're in a really cool venue. Tell us about that hall. What's it? Thalia Hall. Thalia yeah. Hall. Yeah. Thalia yes, Hall. Yeah. Tell so us about it. Thalia Hall is uh, a thousand person venue. Um, it's right upstairs in the building. It's really unassuming when you so cool. when you see the building. You don't expect this venue to be upstairs, but um, it, it people love it. People, love it. People tend to come and eat at the restaurant before the before or after the the show and. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, that Great. is fun. This has got to be a lot of fun for you too, because doing a seasonal menu with local ingredients like this, you kind of get to be a little bit of a mad scientist in the kitchen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's so much great produce in Chicago that we have access to. It's really nice to see, you know, all the farmers uh, send out emails every week yeah. with all their availability, and me and my my coworkers just kind of sit there and and figure out what we're gonna do for the next week, and it's it's a lot of fun. That's great. Yeah. When you're shopping for all the fresh vegetables, do you buy in bulk, or do you buy just sort of for that week? Uh, we tend to buy, it really depends. We tend to buy for just the week, okay. um, and that kind of helps keep the quality as best as possible. Okay. Um, but sometimes, you know, we'll, we'll pickle a big batch of yeah. vegetables, and we'll use that for, through a few weeks, and that works out really well as that's well. That's great, that's for sustainability purposes. Okay, you've got a couple other dishes you brought with us too. While that's cooking, you want to tell us about those? Sure, yeah, so this is our burrata, um, mm. also from the wood fire oven menu. Uh, it's burrata that we're getting straight from Italy. It's really, really amazing burrata. Um, with a oyster mushroom vinaigrette, some peaches dressed in hazelnut and Meyer lemon juice, and some fresh duck sauce over the top. Mm. Ooh. Um, and then this one here is our trout escabiche. It's steelhead mm. trout that's cured and smoked and then rested in a cucumber marinade. And then that has uh, an assortment of different garnishes that kind of changes on a weekly basis depending on what looks good. Is yeah. that dill? They, dill, they yes. Smell it. Yeah. Yep. There's that's some good. dill that's and good. then some uh, Szechuan chili oil. Ooh, Ooh, I like that. Yeah, yeah. I do too. And then what is this one here? So that's the lamb that oh, we're working okay, on. Okay, yeah, that's okay. the finished product. Um, speaking of which, this panisse is probably ready to come out. Okay. Oh. And how long did you cook the lamb? The lamb can cook for about eight minutes or so. Oh, okay. So with this cut, you there's a nice fat cap yep. on the outside. So you render the fat out, get that crispy. And then I just turn it over and baste it with butter. Oh, oh butter. Butter makes butter. everything yeah, butter better. Makes yeah, exactly, everything yeah. better. <laughs> everything. Exactly. So your menu changes regularly. How yes. do you how do you pick and choose what goes with what? It really depends. We get influence from a lot of different places. Um, my old uh, boss and very good friend introduced me to lots of cookbooks yeah. over the years, <laughs> um, and so I I kind of sit down and and just flip through pages of cookbooks and and kind of get inspiration from there and. A lot of it also comes from the fresh produce that's available. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, but yeah. 
All right, so all you have to do now is plate? Yes. Okay, yeah. great. Because I want to try this one. This looks great. This smells buttery. And lamb is one of those things I feel like I just, I would never make at home. Like I'll get it in a restaurant, but I'm not <laughs> yeah. making it at home. It's intimidating, yeah. right? It's yeah. it's just one of those meats yeah. that you don't typically buy right. often. Right. So, yeah. And you know, I don't cook, so I, uh, well, that's also a problem. No, I never cook, so. <laughs> I married smart. Oh, yes, you did. <laughs> yes, you did. We love Todd. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so just a couple pieces of that. Yep, and then we have our chimichurri. This okay. is the apricot chimichurri. And oh, we talked great. about this before the show. What mm -hmm. makes a chimichurri a chimichurri? So a chimichurri traditionally is an Argentine condiment um, that's comprised of lots of olive oil, mm -hmm. parsley, yeah. dried chili. Okay. Um, in this case, we bring in a couple other influences and add some fresh chili, some fish sauce, lime juice, and then the fresh apricots, um, which give it a nice Fresh fruit. I love it. Great. All right, are we gonna try? Yeah, he's gonna finish play, put lay in that, and I yeah. uh, let's make sure we get all the information up on the screen for uh, the restaurant. Yeah. Okay. So they're located at one two two seven West Eighteenth Street in Pilsen, and you can follow them on Instagram, or you can visit their website DusexChicago.com. Fantastic. It looks gorgeous. Thank you. Oh, ooh. it does. Ooh, it's, that's fun. So this is a coconut green curry oh. that's fortified with lamb bacon. Um, of course. If you don't have an ISI, you can just use just the sauce itself. Mm, um, the ISI kind of incorporates a little bit of airiness. Yeah, fullness. And, yeah, gives it a little gives bit thicker. It gives a nice velvety texture. Oh, fantastic. All right, we're going to try that uh, in the break. Thanks, Chef. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me.